So today we'll be talking about this article entitled Maximizing Exposure Therapy, an Inhibitory Learning Approach. It's a very rich article. I would say that I have read it about three times and I learn new things from it every time I read it. There's a lot to digest, so I'm looking forward to getting Dr. Krask's help with that. And thank you today, Dr. Krask, for being available today to talk with us about it. Could I ask you to start by giving us a summary of the inhibitory learning model of exposure treatment? Certainly. Um, so the inhibitory learning model account, as you indicated, derives from uh, principles of associative learning through fear conditioning and extinction, which is where exposure therapy uh, was first born. Um, but it takes into account the more recent developments in learning theory, which basically posit that as an individual proceeds through extinction, or in this case, the clinical proxy of extinction, which is exposure, new learning is taking place. And what is most critical is that that new learning, uh, which we call inhibitory learning, is competing with the original learning, uh, which we call excit excitatory learning. Um, so for an example, if an individual had acquired a fear of dogs as a result of um, being bitten by a dog, the original excitatory learning is that this person perceives dogs as being threatening because they could bite. As the individual goes through exposure therapy, the new inhibitory learning is that uh, not all dogs bite or this particular dog won't bite or there's some other meaning that's associated with dogs that's not as threatening. Now here's the important point. That new inhibitory learning is somewhat fragile. And therefore, the goal of exposure therapy is to develop that new inhibitory learning into the most powerful, potent kind of learning that we can, so that it will be, um, it will resist the tendency to, um, to fall apart over time. And so in our model of inhibitory learning, we're targeting ways to enhance the strength of the learning that happens during exposure therapy and ways of trying to retrieve it in the future so that it remains potent and doesn't uh, fall into what is called a, a secondary status and, and be less uh, competitive with the original excitatory learning. Mm 